All right, Shalom, Shalom, Israel. And before I start this lesson, I'm going to give all honor, glory, and praise to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Kadash. I'm the brother Tazamak Amath, coming from the Camp Prophets in Babylon here in Tampa, Florida. I want to give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone that teach us truth and rule well. Peace and salutation, peace and salutation to the whole fillet that scattered abroad. You know, and today we're going to go into, you know, how Jake, they're going to be utterly destroyed for their ignorance. All right. Their ignorance is going to lead them to a ditch. OK. So I just want to start with this first scripture in the book of Second Chronicles 36 and 16, because, you know, the men of the Lord is out there day, day in and day out, week after week diligent not only to um show the faith they have towards Yahweh Bashim El Shai and the fear they have towards Yahweh Bashim El Shai but also to warn the people actually let's start with this first scripture over here in the book of Isaiah 58 and it says Isaiah 58 and 1 cry aloud spare not okay so us, you know, being the men of the Lord out there crying out on the streets. All right. Amen. We're crying out, warning you. We're not sparing nobody's feelings. Nobody. Hey, we don't give. We don't care about how you feel or what you think, because this is the truth at the end of the day. And if you don't abide to what the Lord says and repent, you will ultimately die. And it says, lift up thy voice like a trumpet. Okay. So we're supposed to, you know, warn the people, okay? When you hear an alarm, it's a warning. It's loud, okay? It doesn't spare no sound. It doesn't. It goes throughout the whole city. So are we for the for the messenger of the king? Now it says, and show my people their transgression, and the house of Jacob their sins, okay? And that's what we're doing, okay? We we warn the people, see. Um, open rebuke, all right. Open correction is better than secret love, you know. And you know, and Jake don't really understand that to a to a a hundred percent entirety. But when you warn them, when you tell them, and you you show them the fear and the power the Lord is coming with, it helps them, you know, plant that seed in their head that, hey man, this shit will happen, okay. So let's go back to uh, Book of Second Chronicles 36. So this is the Book of Second Chronicles 36 and 16. It says, But they mocked the messengers of Yahweh Bashimel Shai. Okay? And this is what our people do ultimately every time we're out there. Not only not only our people, but these heathens. All right, they mock us, and that's all right though, because at the end, um, scriptures say that um, you're gonna know that a prophet has been among you, in Ezekiel 33. Well, really, I get that, but it says, but they mocked the messengers of the Most High and despised his words and misused his prophets. Okay, see, um. Amen. They they misuse us, like um Elder Apostle Tahar said in one of his recent videos. You know, he said, "Man, see, hey, we give out this knowledge for free." <laughs> but see, people that that see it take it for free, they take it for granted. Okay, they take it for granted, and th and that's facts, man. You know, that's facts because people that say that oh it's it's for free, you know, they take it for granted. They don't acknowledge it. But when it's in time and need, and when you really need it, you're going to come searching for us. But guess what? We're not going to be around. Okay? The Lord's going to take us off the scenery. All right? Because you misused us. You didn't abide. You didn't take heed. All right? You despised us. It says, until the wrath of Yahweh rose against his people, till there was no remedy. Okay? So let's go to... Amos 8, 
and go to verse 11. And it says, Behold, <clears throat> behold, the days come, saith the Lord Yahweh, that I will send a famine in the land. Okay, so this is going to be a drought of food and water, right? It says, Not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, because, hey, the Lord is telling you that there's something greater than the lack of food and water, right? But it says, But of hearing the words of Yahweh. Okay, you see the people that don't, they are not intrigued, they don't, they don't grasp this knowledge fast. Okay, they're going to want to know in that day what's going on, what's happening. All right, what, why is this world, why is the world going to a lockdown? Why is the martial law? Why is there, you know, FEMA camps? Okay, because guess what? The prophet has warned you first. And that's, and that's all starting from Yahweh Bashim al Shai. Because before the Lord destroys something, he's going to warn you. The Lord, before the Lord does something, he's going to warn you. And that's a fair, that's a fair power. Right? Verse 12, and they shall wander from sea to sea, and from the north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of Yahweh, and shall not find it, because the prophets are going to be gone. Hey Amen. We're not going to be out there teaching you. Okay. We're not going to be out there breaking down the scriptures when all hell breaking loose, man. No. Okay. It's going to literally be a free for all. And we already have a target on our back. Okay. Verse 13. And in that day shall the fair virgins and young men faint for thirst because the scriptures are, are um, compared to as living water. <clears throat> Yahweh Shai, when he was talking to the woman in the well, he said, if you if you drink of this well, you shall thirst again. Let me see if I can grab it. That's a that's a heavy that's a heavy message Yahweh Shai said. Thirst again. Let's see if I can find it. John four. Let's see. All right, this is John 4 and 11. It says, The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well? And drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle. Yahweh Shai answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him, right, this wisdom, knowledge, understanding, shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Because this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding is what leading us closer to our Lord, okay? And old Lord, ultimately, Lord willing, would be that elect, going to lead us to that everlasting life, okay? So this is very, very powerful, what Yahweh Shah said. So let's go to the book of what I asked for earlier. Um, where is it? Ezekiel 33, verse 33. Now it says, And when this cometh to pass, right? This is a prophecy that's going to come. It says, Lo, it will come. All right? It says, Then shall they know that a prophet have been among them. They're going to know that a prophet have been among them, man. Because guess what? We've been warning you. We've been telling you. But see, Fools despise knowledge. Okay. Fools despise knowledge. Let me see. We can get uh Proverbs first chapter. <laughs> Uh, 
Proverbs 1 and 20, it says, Wisdom crieth out, she uttered her voice in the streets. She crieth in the chief place of concourse, in the opening of the gates, in the city she uttered her words, saying, and that's, you know, that's the, um, that's us speaking on the streets, man. Okay? The wisdom that we have, we have obtained, we convey it to the people. All right? We're really searching for the elect to come out. All right? But verse 22, it says, How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Okay? And that's what we're telling our people. The people that haven't woken up to this truth yet, man. Right? How long are you going to love simplicity? Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Because I have called and ye refused. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. All right. And this is a sign of mercy coming from the Lord, man. That he's, that he's telling you the truth. You know, his name. You know, the depiction of him. What he's coming to do. What he's coming to destroy. Okay. Scripture saying the truth shall set you free. All right. We've been living in a lie. But see, no man regards that. Verse 25, but ye have set at not all my counsel, and with none on my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh, because you mock the messengers of the Most High. So guess what the Lord's going to do? Mock you, man. All right, when you, it says, when your fear cometh as desolation, and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when the stress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. It says, For they that hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of Yahweh, because the, the fear of Yahweh is the root of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. So they hated knowledge, man. See, when they're when they're in the distress, when they're in anguish, that's when they're gonna to look for the Lord. But guess what? The prophets are gonna be gone. It says they would none of my counsel, they despise all my reproof, all my correction. <laughs> Therefore shall they eat of their uh, of the fruit of their own way, and be filled with their own devices. All right, for the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But it says, but whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely, and shall be quiet from the fear of evil. You know, and that's mentioned plenty of times in the scripture. You got Psalms ninety one, you got Job the fifth chapter. Okay. The Lord is going to protect his elect, man, especially his servants. Now, let's go to the book of Sirach 21, and we can start at verse 13. It says, the knowledge of a wise man shall abound like a flood. Okay? Remember, this: the words that we have is, is the, compared to water. Okay? And it says, and his counsel is like a pure fountain of life. All right. The end of, it's like when you re, when you reach a spring water and you drink of it, you feel nourished. Okay. Or when you're in a desert, finally find some pure water, you drink it, you feel you feel life coming through you. All right. The same thing with the truth. It says the inner parts of a fool are like a broken vessel, and when he will hold no knowledge as long as he lives as he liveth. And that's our people, two thirds. <laughs> if a skillful man hear a wise word, he will commend it, then add unto it. All right. But as soon as one of no understanding heareth it, it depleaseth him, and he casteth it behind his back. All right. And that's what we do on the streets. You know, hey, we commend, we commend each other, adding precepts on upon the precepts, line upon line. All right, to get the understanding. Of and expound on the scripture as I'm doing right in front of you. All right, but when a uh, a man of no understanding heareth it, all right, it depletes him. It makes his soul angry. He got them demons hopping on him. Right, the talking of a fool is like a burden in the way, but grace shall be found in the lips of the wise. They inquire at the mouth of the wise man in the congregation. And they shall ponder his words in his heart, in their heart. 
as as is so like it says as is a house that is destroyed so is wisdom to a fool damn and the knowledge of the unwise is a is as talk without sense so you're just uttering nonsense man wow a fool when he sees wisdom is like a house that is destroyed man that's fucking crazy bro right you know it says doctrine unto fools is as fetters on the feet right chains and the manacles on the right hand a fool lifted up his voice with laughter but a wise man do have scarce smile a little right because scriptures say um oppression makes a wise man mad okay verse 21 it says learning is unto a wise man as an ornament of gold let's prove that go to isaiah 13 right Isaiah 13 and 12, it says, I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man more, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. And where was I? Oh, verse 21, it says, learning is unto a wise man as an ornament of gold, because a golden wedge of Ophir, the Lord is going to make the man more precious than that. They already compared to it. All right. It's very valuable. Right, it says, and like a bracelet upon his right arm, a foolish man's foot is soon in his neighbor's house, but a man of experience is ashamed of him. All right, but hey, you get the point. Hey, man, the fool of the and the ignorant of the two thirds are going to despise the word, but the wise men are going to take heed and take advantage of the grace period we have. Scripture say, grow in the grace thereof. All right, so we got to take our time very seriously. My time very wisely in this truth, man. So with that, you know, Roman, I, I made the point and it was edifying. So next time I say, Shalom.